Hey everybody, Matt here from Pyramind. Um, following up on a video I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I did a breakdown of sorts, kind of a, uh, a chord, music theory, harmonic arrangement breakdown of Disclosure's Latch. Uh, it got some really awesome feedback from those of you who have seen it and enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much for being nice. Really appreciate it. You never know how videos are gonna be received on the internet. Everyone seemed to be really into uh, what I did and I really appreciate it. So. I'm back for more. Uh, this is the second of the bunch, and I'll continue with this theme for a little while. Uh, the theme is complexity equals simplicity. Um, what that meant in the last video is what it's going to mean today when we break down the song called Spectrum by Zed, is that a single complex or at least rich harmonic or chordal or music theory idea can be enough to carry an entire length of song. Uh, this came up recently in my producing and arranging class, comes up every semester in my producing and arranging class, which is, you know, why is my song, uh, why can I not arrange my song to be the length that I want? And why does it constantly run out of steam? Why am I always, uh, I kind of run out of ideas. I don't know what to do with the song. I don't know how to finish it. Uh, sometimes the answer is because the, the singular harmonic or chord based idea you have just simply may not be robust enough uh, to carry the length of the song. So one way to fix that is you sound design the hell out of it and you layer it with multiple sounds to fill that. That may not even be enough to carry the song. Um, today, when we look at Spectrum, you'll find that both of these techniques are being used. Uh, the song basically has one 10 chord progression. It's a lot of chords in a single progression. Um, it's easier to digest because some of those chords repeat uh, and the process, or at least the, the, the phrasing, of the progression repeats, so you kind of know where it is and where it's going. It doesn't feel like 10 chords. Um, feels like five or six, uh, because three or four of them repeat. Um, so this single 10 chord progression carries almost the entirety of the song, and Zed delivers it in multiple styles, multiple sound design, multiple genres, multiple feels. So it feels like a very complex song, but it's really one idea displayed in, say, three or four ways. Uh, so that's the theme still, complexity equaling simplicity. In other words, it's simple to spray out the song, or at least more simple to spray out the song over the length of time you want, because the single harmonic or chordal idea is rich. The theme of today's chordal idea is a little bit different from Disclosure's Latch. With Disclosure, what you had was, uh, you had a sort of a, a uh, an F Dorian minor progression in the left hand and an E flat major progression in the right hand in the melody. So the melody was over here and then the chords were over here and one was sadder, oh well, it was actually this way. So the melody was lower but major and happy and the chords were higher and sad and so this kind of interesting progression plus the chords were really spread out and thick. Uh, with Spectrum it's not quite so spread out and thick although there's some very interesting stuff that he's doing to actually build the chords because the chords aren't really chords. There are multiple single lines that compile and become chords. We're going to look at from from both a singular perspective uh, the chordal perspective, and then also from the melodic perspective. What Zed's doing, which is different from Disclosure, is that he's doing something called major minor, or at least that's one way to think of it. Another way to think of it is modal interchange, where he's going from one mode to another, all within the same key, and that's the trick. Uh, everything we're going to do today is in the key of C. We're going to have C minor, and then C major. It's kind of like you know, I'm really sad, and then somewhere in the song, whee, and then back. Uh, and that's, hope you had fun with that one. Um, that's kind of what's going on in the song. You've got 10 chords, all but one of them are minor, and then one of them just goes bing, major, and then whew, right back down. So let's dig in. This is my little mock-up of it. Um, I uh, did some YouTube scouring myself to kind of figure it out. I knew what the chords were, um, and I'll give you my impression of the chords first, and then I'll show you what YouTube taught me the actual layout is, which was kind of interesting. Um, but the th same theme holds true. So I have this piano sound here. And the thing we're looking for is C minor, or C natural minor, or C aeolian. And the notes are C, D, E flat, F, G, a flat, B flat, C. And so this is a C minor chord, and if you did this in the left hand and walked it down, it would sound 
sort of your typical, traditional, sad or serious sound. Uh, the bass of this Z progression starts, I'll play C minor in fact, C minor 7 in the right hand, notice the addition of B flat. Uh, the bass notes are B flat, sorry, A flat, then B flat, C, E flat, F, A flat, B flat, C. Now there, on the second C, major. And then back to F. I'm breathing you, what is it? Breathing you, I'm breathing you in when I want you out. Flying on a truth and a hope of doubt. Flying out, dying, desperation. Shatner jazz rendition notwithstanding, uh, that is the song. Melodically, it's still in C. So again, the bass, A flat, B flat, C, B flat. That little four chord or four note progression, memorize that because we're going to see it again. Or at least the first three, which is flat six, flat seven, one minor, then flat three, four, Flat six, flat seven, one, four, five, one, or in this case, four, five, flat six. This is the one, one, two, three, flat three, one, two, three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So every time we play A flat, we're gonna say flat six. Every time we say B flat, we're gonna say flat seven. And every time we say E flat, we're gonna say flat third. I can move the key. G and it's still one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So that's why I use those flat six, flat seven terms. Um, I can move the root position of the scale from C to any note and the relationships stay the same. So the minor relationship, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. That's what we have to deal with. The progression here is flat six, flat seven, one, flat three, four, repeat, flat six, flat seven, and then on the second one, magic time, major. Otherwise, minor, 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 minor. Notice how these notes don't change. Minor, 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 major. And that little smile, that little major smile in the middle of my otherwise pretty intense song. Uh, is kind of what makes the complexity. That's what makes this uh, Spectrum track pretty awesome. Uh, that's a very common move. If you're familiar with, you know, you probably have heard things like that before. Like say, I don't know. Dead Mouse, some chords. Or Pearl Jam. Jeremy spoke in class today. Pearl Jam. Or la da 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 la la da da seal. So the trivia question is: What do Seal, Dead Mouse, Eddie Vedder, and Zed all have in common? Minor, 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 major. Minor, minor, repeat. That's the whole song. So that's the sort of overarching music theory view of what is complexity in Zed's spectrum. Now the way he's actually delivering the notes is a little more intricate. If you look at the, the MIDI clip here, you will find that that's really tough to play. I, I'm not the world's best piano player, but I can tell you it's going to be tough to play this this way. Uh, what's really going on is you have to think of this as three groups of notes. See up here, and then over here, that's kind of the upper voice. Down here in the middle you have, something along those lines. 
lines. I think specifically it's... And then down here... So you can hear how kind of these two melodies are playing at the same time. One in the fifth voicing, in this case the flat seven to five. We're hovering around the fifth, another one hovering around here, and then the one is actually played down here. And I have that solo. That's the bass line. which is really ugly voicing in my opinion, but that's the major note. That's this note over here played in the bass. Whatever, that's how he's doing it. If we don't worry about that one, come back over here, you get the exact same thing. So let me pull off the bass. And for the first half, I guess what I'll do is take all these notes and temporarily disable them, you'll get. of it. That's the upper voice. Let's mute those and see if we can take these lower voices. Mute them. If you're not familiar, I'm just hitting the number zero to mute those voices. Need to come back in. first half. I'm just showing you how this chord breaks down into um, individual notes. So the piano says and stepping out of here he's actually doing it It's working. If I were just playing it as a right hand, it would be, you know. Key being, again, major seven, you get. That's where the major seven is, and then you get. Interesting breakdowns. So that's what Zed did. Three individual melodic lines compiling to make chords. Zooming out and looking at it from the piano perspective, it's the same thing, flat six, flat seven, one, flat three, four, five, sorry, flat six, flat seven, one, major. Otherwise, it's a minor chord the whole way. That's the complexity. That's the chord progression. It pretty much does that throughout the song. This is what it sounds like when it's all put together, and I'll add the bass back in. Sounds pretty much like what it's supposed to sound like. That's what's going on in this song. That 10 chord progression is done in plucks, and then it's done in big chord stabs, doo doo doo, right? And that's the song, but it's the same progression. And when Matthew does, we'll run, we'll let do, 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 same progression. There's a riser, breaks down again, does the electro section, same progression. Breaks down again, comes back to plucks, same progression plays, I think last count I did, nine times in the song. The song is basically nine renditions of that 10 chord progression with two or three builds and risers and one slightly different section, but pretty much the same chords. In fact, I think at that place it just hovers on flat six, flat seven, one. And then back to this. So it's one idea displayed multiple times, multiple ways. It's even more complex than just one idea by being 10 chords long, it's a very long progression. Mostly minor with a big fat major smile in the middle, 
multiple melodic lines playing together as point and counterpoint to make the chord. Now, while this is doing its thing, the melody is doing its thing. Let's take a hot look at the melody, or at least the main structure of the melody, the intro structure of the melody, and I'll play along with... I think I'll play it in this register, uh, just so you can hear the notes. It's again... C minor. One note that doesn't belong is E. Remember, C minor. One, two, flat three. Not three. So he borrows this note while the one chord is doing. In that one moment, he's borrowing. You see a beautiful chromatic motion you get. As he walks from the fourth through the major to the minor. Sounds like this. portion he never bothers hitting the three or flat three so it doesn't matter it's you know lights will chase us high will love can save us I will never let you go this is the fifth it's common to the minor and to the major very safe note so it's beautiful I mean it's it's Really well crafted. Uh, Matthew does a great job in his vocal. Obviously, his voice is, you know, just from the gods. And he sings it straight. He sings it beautifully, nice and clean. In the first half, borrowing that major note to kind of uh, remind you, hit a little extra hard that it's major in that moment. He goes major when the chords go major. The chords go major at one moment in the progression, towards the back half of the progression, just when you're ready for something to change, it does. It goes from sad to happy, it opens wide up, and then foom, falls right back down, and man, you are just ready to hear that again. Luckily, he will give it to you again about eight more times. That's Zed Spectrum. That's how he's being complex, and that's how he is taking a fairly long and somewhat intricate uh, harmonic idea and using it to spread the song over the lifespan of the song. Let me know what you think about this one. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest Pure Mind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at puremind.com.